anatom of the lungs. We have two lungs. Each lung is cone shaped and has the following: has apex and base, two surfaces and two borders. The apex is directed upwards and projects into root of the neck. The base or diaphragmatic surface of the lung concave to accommodate the diaphragm. Anterior border sharp and thin, but the posterior border lies at the sides of the vertebral column. The surfaces has a costal surface or, or lateral surface convex and related to thoracic wall. Mediastinal surface contains the hilum of the lung, then the diaphragmatic surface forming the base of the lung. This figure showing the lung has apex, apex upwards, it is the apex of the lung, and this is the base of the lung. This is sharp anterior border, and this is blunt to posterior border. This is the mediastinal surface of the lung, and this is the root of the lung. Then loops and the fissures of the lungs we have. Right lung is divided by two fissures into three loops, upper, middle, and lower loops. The left lung is divided by oblique fissure, one fissure only into two loops, upper and the lower. Fissures of the lung, the oblique fissure starts at the posterior border of the lung, opposite the tip of the third thoracic spine, or opposite the spine of the scapula. It ends at the inferior border of the lung at the sixth costochondral junction. Transverse or horizontal fissure found only on the right lung. It begins at the anterior border of the lung at the fourth costal cartilage and extends horizontally to meet the oblique fissure at the mid-axillary line opposite the thick. This is the both lungs and this is the oblique fissure on the left lung only. And this is oblique fissure and the horizontal fissure on the right lung. And this is the superior loop as this is the inferior loop. This is superior of the right lung and this is inferior of the right lung and this is the middle loop on the right lung only. The surface anatomy of the lungs, apex at a point one inch above the medial third of the clavicle, anterior border represented by a line drawn from the apex to a point at the middle of the sternal angle. At the right side, it descends vertically down to the th sixth costal cartilage. At the left side, it descends to the fourth costal cartilage where it deviates to the left to form the cardiac notch and continues downwards one inch lateral to the margin of the sternum to reach the sixth costal cartilage. Uh, oblique fissure represented by a line drawn from the third the thoracic spine at the medial end of the spine of the scapula and extends obliquely down and forwards along the course of the sex rib to end at junction of the sex rib with its costal cartilage. Transverse or horizontal fissure, a horizontal line drawn from the margin of the sternum opposite the fourth costal cartilage and extends laterally to meet the sex rib at the mid-axillary line. Root or hilum of the lung. The root lies opposite fifth, sixth, seventh, thoracic vertebrae. The root is formed by many structures which entering or leaving the lung. Hilum, it is the area in the lung at which the structures entering or leaving the lung. Bronchial vessels, number one. There are two bronchial arteries at the left and only one bronchial artery on the right side. The left arises from the aorta while the right arises either from aorta or from upper left bronchial artery. The bronchial veins on the right side end in the azygous vein, while on the left side ends in the left superior intercostal vein, or in hemiazygous, but some bronchial veins drain in the pulmonary veins or in the left atrium. The root of the left lung, root is formed by the following. Number one, left pulmonary artery in the upper part, left bronchus blue, and behind, two pulmonary veins, one anterior and the other inferior to the bronchus. Bronchial vessels, lymph vessels, and the lymph nodes, pulmonary nerve plexuses. The root of the right lung is formed by the following, abarterial bronchus above the pulmonary artery, pulmonary artery, hyperterial bronchus below the pulmonary artery, two pulmonary veins, one anterior, 
and the other inferior to the bronchus. Bronchial vessels, lymph vessels, and lymph nodes, pulmonary nerve plexuses. This figure showing the roots of both lungs. This is the root of the right lung, and this is the left lung. And this is the structure that lies in, in, in the root of both right and the left lungs. The structures are related to mediastinal surface of the right lung or relation of the mediastinal surface of the right lung. Above the hilum, there are impressions for the following. Arch of azygous vein, right bronchocephalic vein, right phrenic nerve, trachea with the right vagus nerve. Esophagus, then below the hilum, there is impression for inferior vena cava for a small area, anterior to the hilum, cardiac impression for right atrium and it is pericardium. Posterior to the hilum, there is esophagus. Azygous vein lies behind the esophagus. This also figure showing the structures related to the mediastinal surface of the uh, right lung. The structures related to the mediastinal surface of the left lung. Above the hilum, there are impressions for the following. Aortic arch, vertical impression above the aortic arch for left common carotid artery, left subclavian, then left vagus and the left phrenic nerves. Esophagus with the thoracic duct on its left side. Below the hilum, a short impression for esophagus. Anterior to the hilum, cardiac impression for the left ventricle with left auricle. Posterior to the hilum, large group for descending aorta. So you can find here the esophagus is found in both mediastinal surfaces of both lungs, right and left. This figure is showing here the impressions. This is the descending aorta, and this is the esophagus in the right lung. The trachea, it is about 10 centimeters long. It starts at the lower border of the cricoid cartridge at the level of the sixth cervical vertebra in the neck, or tracheal bifurcation is called the carina, lies opposite the lower border of the fourth thoracic vertebra at the level of the sternal angle, where it divides into right and the left main principal bronchi. It lies just in the median plane, while the bifurcation occurs little to the right of the median plane. The upper half of the trachea present in the neck, while the lower half present in the superior mediastinum. The lumen is kept opened by incomplete trachea rings, and the thorax, it lies in the superior mediastinum, and this figure showing the trachea, and this is bifurcation of the trachea into two bronchi. The right main bronchus is directed to the right behind the right pulmonary artery and below the arch of azygous vein. It differs from the left bronchus in, in being wider, shorter, and more in line with the trachea. So any inhaled foreign body directed to the right bronchus. Branches of the right bronchus, it divides before reaching the hilum of the right lung into two divisions. Ibarterial bronchus, but above the pulmonary artery, it is directed to the upper loop. Hyperterial bronchus passes below the pulmonary artery and directed to the middle and the lower loops. The second order bronchi divides inside the lung into a smaller third order branches, which passes to the bronchopulmonary segments. And this is subdivisions of each bronchus, hyperterial and hyperterial bronchi. The left main bronchus, it is longer, narrower, and more horizontal than the right one. The arch of aorta curve is above its origin. It passes in front of the esophagus and descending aort. It gives the second order bronchus to upper loop and continuous downwards, backwards, and laterally to the lower loop. And it has no aberterial bronchus as in the right one. From these divisions arise the third order bronchus to become bronchopulmonary segments. Uh, the bronchopulmonary uh, segments of each lung is formed by bronchopulmonary uh, segments are separated from each other by connective tissue septa. Each segment of the lung has its own bronchus and branch of the pulmonary artery. Uh, the pulmonary veins run in the septa between 
the segment. So pulmonary veins are intersegmental between segments. The arteries are segmental while the veins are intersegmental. Any segments can be removed surgically without affecting the other segments. Segments of the right lung are 10 segments. Upper loop contains the three, apical, anterior, and posterior. Middle loop contains the two segments, medial and lateral. Lower loop contains five segments, apical, and the four basal, anterior basal, posterior basal, medial basal, and the lateral basal. Segmentation of the left lung. Upper loop contains the five segments also, apical bronchus, posterior bronchus, anterior, superior, and inferior. The lower loop contains also five segments, and it is bronchi take the same direction as the right lung. Apical, then four basal, anterior, posterior, lateral, and medial basal. And this figure showing the segments, the different segments of each lung, right and the left lungs.